Alright guys, what's up? It's Jimmy back here on the channel. Today I have another video for you guys. I think you're really going to enjoy this one. As you can tell by the title, this is a, a lot of you guys have been asking me, uh, where's the cluster video? When's it coming out? So I'm going to kind of do it today, for the uh, at least for the 02 to 04 cluster builds um, that all of you guys out there are wanting to do. So I'm going to kind of give you a hand here and tell you what I did um, as best I can. So let's hop in and I'll show you what I did. And real quick before I get started, uh, if you're not following my Instagram, definitely go check that out. I'll leave the name right here. Uh, I do a couple of little other videos and pictures on there too. So uh, definitely if you like this stuff, definitely go check that out real quick. All right, so here is my old O2 cluster, just kind of the gist of it there. It's not really the, that's not really the cluster anymore. That's just all the covers and everything. This is the O8 cluster that I built to house all of my O2 stuff for my 7.3. So everything works just like it should. So I'm gonna give you a rundown of kind of what I did. And um, let me begin by saying that this thing, pain in the butt to build, um, takes so many hours, it's not really worth it for me to build them for other people because uh, I won't make any money off of what I'm doing here. Um, at, at least for the O2 to O4s, they're so much time and they're kind of difficult as you can see down in there. You can see that's only a fraction of the wiring. There's it's wires everywhere. And uh, just the very nature of the O2 to O4 board makes it very hard to do a gauge cluster swap. Um, but to begin with here, I'm gonna kind of show you what uh, dismantling this one looks like and where you gotta start and kind of what you wanna use and what you don't wanna use. So let's start with that. All right, so to start off, you kind of wanna dismantle your O2 to O4 gauge cluster so that you're going to take like this plastic cover off and set that off to the side and you got like your face plate um, which would have your motors on the back which you can see I've removed all my motors so that would kind of come off to the side and then you got your back cover which uh, you don't really need anymore so toss that off to the side too so separate all that and what you're gonna want to keep is your motors um, your odometer with the little trip thing down there and then um, you're going to want to keep your whole board. You can see here on this 08 cluster that I have run the entire board from my 02 in here. That's really what makes these things go is the board. None of this other stuff really matters um, except for the motors. So how do you go about doing a gauge cluster swap? Well to answer that question um, is basically you're going to mount your board on the bottom and you want to take everything that your circuit board for the gauge cluster gives and you want to project it onto this newer gauge cluster so that it looks like it's factory and that it, it acts what it does you want your motors to be working your odometer to be working um, obviously this one has a digital gear readout which I'll explain so you want all that stuff to be working all your lights and everything so the main concept here is to take stuff from the O2 to O4 and extend it and bring it into this face plate of the 08. So let me explain more on that here. All right, so the concept here is dismantle your 2008 uh, gauge cluster here, take your board out, get rid of that. You don't need this anymore. So take that out, separate that. And the main things you really care about is like your needles here, you wanna pop them off. Um, you got your covers and your bezel back there, that white piece. That's a big flat sheet like this one is. It's a basically like a piece of paper. And uh, that's what um, goes over the whole uh, board under here. So as you can see here, my, this is also part of the 08 one, which you need this too. So without dismantling my creation here too much, because it's really a pain in the butt to put it all back together, I'm gonna flip it over here and you're gonna see more of what I've done. So to start off with, the first thing I would do Mount your motors. Put your motors in the slots of this housing right here for the 08 and bolt them one, two, three, four. You got the other two down here, one and two. And I used, I believe I used number six bolts and I sent them through so that they bolt to this plastic piece. Don't, don't use any glue. You're not going to want these things to come falling off or vibrating off um, down the road because this thing is, it's a diesel truck. It's going to shake a lot and uh, you want it to be sturdy. So use bolts. Um, and send them through and fasten them. You'll see where the holes are down in here. Um, and you know, they'll, they'll line up, they'll be just perfect. Enough room to get them to line up and sit in the hole. So drill your holes, send your bolts through, mount your motors, and uh, get them out of the way first. 
Next step is if you can see down in here, I have this PCB um, solderable board. You're able to take soldering iron to it. And I've run jumper wires that I have. I can get a couple and show you what I did. And basically here, I've taken these jumper wires and I started at one of the light circuits on the uh, old board. I popped the old incandescent bulb out and I soldered uh, my wires there to the positive end of the ground. I forget which one it is, but um, solder uh, the positive to the positive side of that incandescent uh, socket right there and then do it on the other side. But get rid of the old bulb because those are 12 volt sources and that's perfect for running your LED circuit inside of here. All right, so these are the uh, the jumper wires I'm talking about. You can get a whole pack of them off Amazon. I'll link the stuff that I bought in the PCB board. And you're gonna kind of run this out. I would start first with your light circuits that um, when you turn your lights on on your dash, uh, all of the backlighting comes on. I'll show you a picture of what I mean there, uh, of what the backlighting is. You'll see these little circles in uh, the plastic plate here this whole plastic plate from the 08 one. You'll see these little circles uh, about the size of a quarter inch hole or whatever. Um, you're gonna want your LEDs to stick through there because that's where these original ones on the board are. You can see I got an LED here by my thumb. Here's another one, here's another one, here's another one. And they kind of work around. You'll see it in the plastic. Now, when you mount your LEDs, you'll mount them to this PCB board, which I'll throw a picture up of what that looks like. And you're going to want to mount them accordingly around the whole thing so that they stick through the hole. And your PCB board, you can kind of cut it out and leave a hole in the middle for the motor. Um, so that's how you go about that. Or you can get some rectangular PCB ones and go around it like a rectangle almost. So that you need clearance in the middle for your motor. Okay, so now you can see uh, what the PCB looks like here. This is the, uh, the board I'm talking about. And you got the two options, like I said. You got this. You can take this big square piece and set this behind the gauge cluster and when you're building it. And it cut out a circle in the middle so that the motor can clear and then you can get your lights around it. But I didn't do that so I set, I didn't use these big pieces. I actually used a couple rectangular ones and I built like a square around it. And as you can see I have my LEDs on here which I, what I do is I flip it over, I put the LED through the holes and then I bend the, uh, the little ends on them. So that they stay there and then I could solder them. And then I uh, obviously I put them in the correct spots so that they stick up in the right spot. Um, so you can actually see them when you turn them on. But then what I do from there is when I'm building my light circuit is I take these jumper wires. There's a bunch of different sizes. And, and um, I take these and I, if I'm building them in series or parallel or whatever, I connect these wires to the holes accordingly and then I solder them together. And that's how I build the circuit. Um, using these and and these uh, boards and these lights, so uh, that explains that a little more. But um, that's the main idea there. So you got a couple LEDs here, a couple up here. I think there's two each for each uh, gauge up there. You got like five or six down here, and uh, you're gonna want to set those up so that the LEDs pop through the hole, so you can see them in your backlighting there. And then that's where the fun part comes in is that you're gonna want to solder in resistors on the board as well. So this is, if you're new to this, there's there's calculators out there, there's websites for, um, let's just say you're like, oh, I wanna run 20 uh, green LEDs. Now, how do you do that with the resistors? You can go in there and type it in and uh, they'll give you um, some series, uh, which is just a straight thing with the resistors in series, or they'll give you parallel ones. Uh, so you could build your circuit accordingly to that I would definitely watch a few videos on how to build a circuit with resistors and LEDs if you don't know how. But um, that's basically the gist of getting that back in there. And also, uh, this is the kit I got this LED set off of Amazon. And uh, it's important for when you're doing your LEDs uh, with the circuits and you're getting resistors. Um, you can see what the voltage drops are here. These are three for the blue. and You can see the list of the uh, voltage drops and then uh, when you go to that calculator website, um, you'll be able to type them in and uh, get them accordingly to what you want to do. So now after you do that, you should have your motors mounted, you should have your lights on um, when you do that. And now uh, you, you don't want to forget a light also for your needles. You got to stick like a red LED in here so your needles shine through and then you can see it at night. So don't forget that too while you're doing that. And um, if you want to, you can take your motor 
off from the back, unbolt it, and then stick your LED in there and run it like that so you have your um, built-in uh, needle lights with the whole circuit. So when you turn the, da uh, the knob on the dash, you get uh, lights on your gauge cluster. So that should take care of all the lighting. Um, and next, I'll kind of move to the idiot lights. So on a 6.4, all your idiot lights are basically in here. You got a couple indicators, uh, I believe. You got your four-wheel drive high, four-wheel drive low. You got your cruise one over here. I believe this one down here is your tow haul button, which is overdrive. So for those, the idea is basically to, you can see what I did down here. Take your old LEDs off. Uh, sorry, let me get this to focus. You're going to take your old LEDs off and then you're going to mount your wires, solder them, and extend them. So let's just say this was my way to start light. I'm going to extend that up to where the way to start light would be on the 6.4 cluster and mount it. Uh, that'll take care of your lights. Just extend them up and uh, mount the LEDs on the PCB board right to where you want. You can send some bolts through the PCB board and bolt to this plastic piece right here and that's that. Um, so that's the next step and then you're going to want to extend your uh, odometer wire. You can see down here I got PCB that I soldered to my odometer and I extended it so that it shines right in the middle here so I can see it perfectly. So that takes care of that. One other very important thing when working with these different LEDs is uh, these are directional. So um, you see how the, the two legs are different. Uh, so they only take current one way. They don't do it the other way or else you won't get any light. So definitely if you're new to that, um, make sure you're, you're aware of this when you're soldering these. So you have them in the right direction so that they don't um, not work. You want them to work right the first time so make sure double check see the length of the legs and also if you look on it which you, you won't be able to see it on this camera um, there's a flat side uh, on this LED that also indicates the direction too so and uh, the case with most LEDs is the longer one is the positive one and uh, the shorter one is the negative one and then of course if you snip these off and you can't tell there's um, the negative side will have the flat face to it so you'll be able to tell it that way and when you're extending your wires here too, you also want to be careful that you have the direction correct when you hook them up there uh, and here because um, these are directional too. If you can see this little arrow, that represents a diode. And uh, the flat side with the bar at the end of the arrow, that's the negative side. And the, uh, the side where the arrow comes from would be the positive side. So uh, that's also directional. That's important to note when you're extending the wires that you have your LED soldered in the correct way. And then my last step here will be to, you can see this extra plug I have, um, would be your gear indicator, which I used the uh, aftermarket one, which, which is the Dakota Digital um, setup, and I, uh, that hooks up to the transmission down low. You know, their kit explains what to do there, but then I built my own plug here, ran my wires up, resistors and all that, and then I put the LEDs in the slots where I wanted, and uh, also while I did my whole uh, backlighting thing for when I turned the knob on for the lights at night, I also stuck an LED in there so that uh, they light up green at night and then whichever one is on is red at the same time. And uh, the red kind of cancels out the green there and um, gives you sort of like an orange to indicate which gear you're in. So that's perfect. But uh, again, you got the resistors down there. You can see um, all there and stuff. So. That takes care of that, and then that should pretty much finalize it, other than just putting it back together. One other thing I forgot, got another plug here. This is actually my tow haul button for my overdrive, which I just extended down to my column and uh, tapped it off the wire for that, so that will work too. I also got a resistor in there because this is 12 volts coming in, and uh, that'll fry the LED if you don't put resistors, but um, that should cover everything. The reason why these O2 to O4 ones are hard is because the whole board back here, when you got to sandwich it all together, that's why my wires are everywhere. You got to kind of press these two together. And you can see I used uh, some zip ties to kind of hold these two together, which I don't really recommend, but it works fine for me because uh, obviously this was the first cluster I've ever built, but um, it kind of holds everything together perfectly and it's just a mess because putting it together finally you got all these wires and you're pressing them together blindly the the bottom board and the 08 housing so that's the tough part there but um 
other than that, I mean, this is this is pretty much the way to do it. Uh, at least for these 02 to 04s, the 99 to 01s are a little easier because the uh, circuit board kind of goes in pieces and you can get at it from the back and stuff um, with your soldering wires and stuff. So it's not as hard, I don't think. I think it'll be a little easier than sandwiching these two together, but yeah. All right, guys. So I know I've had a ton of you guys asking me how I built this. And uh, after this video, you, you can kind of see uh, how hard it is to explain this. It, it's just a billion wires and uh, a lot to do. There's a lot here. And I'm trying my best here to explain it, but um, I hope I answered most of your questions. Hopefully I gave you a jump start so that you can kind of go tackle it. Uh, there's several different ways to build these. Uh, so kind of to make a video on it, especially after I've built it, is kind of hard to explain what I did. But I did my best here, so I hope uh, that answers your guys' questions. If you have any more, I can try to answer them as best I can. But again, it's, it's just, this is a tough topic to cover, um, especially in a tutorial how-to uh, type of video because it's just, it, t it takes hours and hours. I got over 100, probably 200 hours on this since it was my first one. And I, I, I figured it out along the way. So uh, that's kind of what you're gonna have to do. I would recommend uh, getting a breadboard and doing it that way first. If you're practicing your resistors and uh, building a circuit, do it on that. Um, definitely get yourself uh, one of these guys over here, over, wait right there get yourself one of them uh crucial to this so that you can test everything with uh the 12 volts that you're going to need um, and then you can dim it too with the with the little knobs on it and uh, get your voltage to drop too so um, that power supply box absolute necessity i'll link that in the description too if you're going to be tackling uh, one of those so once again thank you guys for watching all my videos and definitely hit that subscribe button on this one uh, in the future, I'm working on that 6-7 cluster. I'm going to build that, and I'm going to try to do a little bit of a better job explaining that one uh, once I get my hands on it and uh, kind of get to work on it. So give this video a thumbs up, too, and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video.